Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. What's going on, you guys? As you can see, my office is kind of a wreck. Um, yesterday, I started to film the how to modify a Power Mac G5 to turn it into a case that you can use an ATX PC system with. And uh, I filmed through half of the teardown process and then needed to go get an Allen wrench to take the heatsink coolers off and the processors out. And um, my camera went to sleep. And when I came back, I just hit record without looking at it and tore down the entirety of the computer for the most part and didn't record any of it. So that being said, hopefully that's a mistake I only make one time, but this is unfortunately one of those things you can't just throw back together once you've already torn it all apart. Um, so we're going to go ahead now that the case is basically torn down. So all that's in here are the standoffs for the motherboard and the hard drive tray and the cables that go to the hard drive tray and uh, this one little plate that holds the hard drive tray in. So basically we're going to start our modification process from here at this point. So if you want to see a video on how to tear them down, there's definitely a lot of videos out there. So yeah, basically all you need to keep are the motherboard screws because you're going to reuse these standoffs. And if you want to keep the hard drive tray, you can keep the screws for that. Um, and then if you're going with a full size ATX system, you're going to need to keep this plate right here. Uh, you're going to need to get rid of this plate if you're going full size ATX, sorry. But if you're going micro ATX, you can actually keep this plate and put it back in. So it's a little bit difficult to uh, reassemble, but uh, Dom's build came out great and he used micro ATX and kept this all in there and kept the hard drives where they're at. Actually, he put SSDs in, but um, yeah, so basically you're going to need to keep this little piece with the fan grills that go on there and the little screws that came out of it and the motherboard screws. And other than that, the rest of it is all pretty much um, garbage with the exception of the case and the door. So that being said, we are going to get into how to start the modification process for this computer. So I'm going to bring the camera over here and start tearing it down. Here we go. All right. So a couple things we're going to need to talk about are the tools you're going to need from this point. You're going to need a pair of pliers. So just any pliers will do as long as they're not cutting pliers. Um, you're going to need a Torx T8 screwdriver. Um, Preferably one that's pretty nice just because you're going to tear the crap out of it by tearing it apart. So um, I just went and bought a small kit from Ace Hardware a long time ago and I happen to have a T8. Um, and then you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver for a couple things. And you're also going to need a pick or a knife for getting this um, latch mechanism apart. Um, there's a little lock ring on there. So um, the Phillips head screwdriver, you're going to need to take the screws out of the hard drive tray if they're still installed. And you're also going to need to take the PCI brackets off. So that's where that is. But the first thing you're going to want to do is take your pliers and go through and carefully grab your motherboard standoffs that are in there and just pry them to the side and they pop right off. So that's what you're going to end up with and put all of them to the side. So that way you've got all of them when you go to uh, reattach. So I am moving all of these to the side and just popping them off. They're super easy to pop off. So if you're trying to pull really hard, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't need to pull that hard. So the only ones you can get rid of are these ones. The, they have a little nubbin in them and that's just to center the motherboard on. So we're going to toss those in the junk pile if they have that little uh, nub on the top of them. So I'm going to pull those out right now and then I will speed through the rest of these motherboard standoffs. Okay, so now that you have all those out, the next thing you're going to want to do is if you're doing a full-size ATX motherboard, you need to take this plate out. And that is done 
by first removing all of these T8 screws at the bottom down here um, on the plate. There is one, two, three, four, five of them. Oh, and I missed a motherboard standoff. So let me grab that real quick. So that way that's out of there. All right, so just go ahead and take all of these screws out because you're not gonna need them. Um, but put them to the side in the keep pile just in case you damage a few of the ones on the outer ring for when you go to reassemble this case. So keep pile. Now, I've got those five out, and then what you'll notice is this plate is still attached underneath this latch mechanism up top. So what you're going to do is find the right size Allen wrench, which I believe is about a three millimeter. Might be a two and a half. So here's a, okay, it is a three millimeter and you're just gonna take all of these screws out and put them in the keep pile. So there's quite a few of these as well, um, but they're pretty quick to pull out, except for this one on the end that you can't really free spin your Allen wrench. Um, so let me get these out. All right, so now once you have those out, you're almost ready. But the next part is getting these little uh, actual door latches out. And so how these come out is gonna be extremely complicated to show, but there's a little metal clip on the back of them that you just push up and Actually, this is something that's a lot easier to do with a knife. You pry this edge up, and then you just pull them right off. So they're sitting in there like this, and just on that clip, and you just pull them right out. And this is basically how they're sitting in there. So you have the clip mechanism that goes through the hole and into the plastic, and this thing just slides right over the top of them. So Again, those are going to be something you want to keep because that's how the door attaches. So you just pry them out a little bit and pop them right off. So there's only three of these. Go ahead and keep them. They're not uh, keyed or anything for any specific reinstall order. So um, they don't matter as far as what order they go back on. But that's that. And then the last piece of getting this latch mechanism off is actually on the latch itself. There's a little pin right here that I have no idea if you guys can see, but there's a little pin right here that um, you need to pop a little C-clip C off of, and then the pin should just drop right out. So I'm going to readjust the camera make sure you guys can see it, and then we will go from there. Okay, so there's this little clip right here uh, on this latch mechanism. It spins pretty free. That's the little C-clip that you're going to need to take off. And it's kind of a pain to get off of there, um, but you need it to come off in order to get the plastic out of the latch. So uh, basically, you just hold down the one side and then push on, some, on the other side of it with something. Uh, I'm using screwdrivers and tweezers and it just popped off into the case. So here it is, right there. I don't know if that's in focus. Let me bring it up here. That little guy right there, that's all you needed to pop out. So then when you come back to here, you're gonna keep that, put that in your keep pile. Come back to here, this pin should just push right out the bottom um, may need a little persuasion with a screwdriver so that pushes out and there's that pin. So once that pin is off, this latch is completely free. There's a couple of nylon washers that you're going to want to keep um, with it. So throw those over with the pin and then this whole plastic latch locking mechanism tray slides out 
this piece you're gonna need to keep as well. So you've got a pretty big pile of parts to keep right now, um, but that's the extent of what we're gonna take out of this case now after, right as soon as we get this played out. So I need to move my camera and then we will, uh, we will go ahead from there. Okay, so now this plate is free. Nothing's holding it on, there's no bolts. Um, there's a little sticker on mine for some reason. But to get this plate off, you wanna slide it forward so that it goes to the bigger side of the holes on the bottom. And then you just push it right out the side. So mine's hung up on something that I have no idea what it is. But you just push it and then it should lift up right off of there, just like that. And that's gonna remove the hard drive tray, the whole plate and all the rest of the cables that we have. And like I said, I'm not reusing that because I had, um, I had planned on doing an ATX mod. So this is the entirety of what the empty case looks like. Um, so now what you're gonna wanna do is you can pull off all of these sensor boards. They're kind of a pain to get off. There's sensor wires that run down all the way to the side down here. This is what tells the airflow um, to slow down once the side, the plastic piece is on. So that's all garbage. And yeah, now we have a dusty Mac, Power Mac G5 case ready to go. Um, we're gonna take out the remainder of the PCI slot covers. For this mod, we're gonna hold on to them because we will be reusing them. So hold on to those and the screws that go with them. And then you should be good to go. So from here, what we need to do is go and get our hardware um, that we're gonna be putting in here. So I need to go and grab another system and tear it down. So I will be right back and I will try to make sure to turn my camera off and then back on when I come back. So I'll be right back. All right, so for this next part, I went downstairs, I pulled out my most easily accessible full-size ATX motherboard and a PCI Express expansion card. Um, so this is just a GPU, it's a GTX 1060 from EVGA, it's the mini one. And uh, this is just an X470F Strix uh, gaming motherboard from ASUS. So what you're gonna need to do is in this pile of stuff you were supposed to keep, start grabbing your motherboard standoffs. Um, all the ones that are acceptable for screws. So there's a lot of them. So once you've grabbed those, you realize there's a whole bunch more than we need. Lay them out on the table, and what you'll find is there's actually two different sizes of these. So if you put them up like this, you can meet the ends. So these two are the same size. So this one right here is bigger than the other two. So we're gonna use this as our benchmark for what size is what going forward. So that's a bigger one, bigger one. And these two are both small. So what you'll find is you have two, four, six, eight small ones and three, six, nine large ones. So if you're using a full size ATX motherboard or an EATX motherboard, you need nine of them. So you can't use these small ones. Um, I don't like the small ones anyways because the way you have to route the cables underneath them, um, underneath the motherboard means you need more space. So the bigger ones are best. And then from here, grab nine of your motherboard screws that you had. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine which I just threw on top of the motherboard. And what you're gonna do is, with all these screws and the long standoffs, pick up your motherboard, 
put it on the I.O. side, hopefully it stands up, and grab your screwdriver and just start screwing these in through the motherboard holes. Um, that way you have the standoffs ready to go and in place. So I'm going to start with this top corner and just thread this onto the screw very carefully. These are aluminum so they will strip easily um, if you're too aggressive with it. And like I said, you, you don't need nine, but nine is the magic number. That's how many, um, how many spots there are. So we're going to go ahead and start screwing all of these into the motherboard. Okay, so now looking at the back of your motherboard, you should have the nine standoffs installed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're all the right length standoffs and uh, we should be good to go ahead and move forward. So there's a couple different ways that I want to talk about doing this. So let's put this to the side and bring the case back up here. So first we want to talk about how to attach them. Now I have this five minute epoxy. Um, it's clear marine home epoxy. Uh, I just bought it at a hardware store. It works pretty well. Um, it's water resistant and it's paintable, which is important if you plan on painting your case, which if you're going this far to mod a Mac G5, you're hopefully gonna paint it, but you may just refinish it or whatever. But um, so you can choose to either attach that right now, or the other option is to attach them after you've painted, which is what Dom and I chose to do on our previous builds. Um, I would recommend for this progress, for this, for this particular mod, to wipe all this out, make it nice and clean, and then go ahead and attach those standoffs now. So I'm going to go grab a paper towel and wipe this out. So obviously it's probably a good idea to... Um, after you've wiped it out, use some kind of alcohol wipe or something like that to make sure that it's uh, really, really clean. But um, for this purpose, that's going to be fine because, um, yeah, I just feel like that's going to be fine. So the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, I'm just going to use a plate from this. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is grab some epoxy. I have this five minute epoxy. It's clear, it's paintable, it's pretty convenient. And uh, this is just the old PSU plate cover um, from the system, which I'm not gonna be reusing. So uh, I'm gonna use it to mix and uh, apply my epoxy resin mix to the back of the motherboard standoffs so that way I can get it in place. So first thing is you just take the caps off. These have already been used on my system and just pour a little bit on there. And then you want to mix about the same amount of the other side of the epoxy. So this is the hardener. So I want to make a circle about the same size. There we go, and throw the lid back on it. It's actually a little bigger, but not too much. So I just have a paper clip here that I'm gonna use to uh, mix these together. And when you mix these, they start to dry within five minutes. So you wanna be completely prepared. Have your standoff screwed in, have your motherboard ready, have the GPU ready and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to move this out of the way, bring this motherboard up here. Um, hopefully it just rests somewhere nicely. Um, please don't rest your motherboard like this. But uh, anyway, so just mix up this little epoxy mixture here and then take it and drip it right onto that motherboard standoff and do the same thing on all nine of them. And we're going to set this off to the side. And the next thing we want to do is take our motherboard and flip it over inside the system. 
and line up your top PCI slot with the top PCI slot down here. And that's why I told you you're gonna need a GPU or some kind of PCI Express slot. So typically on mainstream motherboards, your top slot is actually gonna line up, uh, your top full 16X slot is gonna line up with the, um, the second slot on the case. So I'm gonna drop that GPU in, slide it into place, grab, a self, grab ourselves a screw, and just throw it in there so that everything's all nice and lined up. Make sure our, case, our motherboard is straight in our case. Make sure the GPU actually locks in to the PCI Express slots, which this one did not. So we wanna take that back out um, and get this to go in there. So it needs to go a little bit closer to the edge. Just like that. So now we're all latched in on the bottom hooks of the slot and We've got our motherboard standoffs making a mess inside the case. Got our GPU screwed down hopefully here pretty soon. There we go. Got the motherboard nice and straight. And then it's the waiting game. So once that's in and the motherboard standoffs are all making contact with the case, we want to give it five minutes to cure. I'm going to wipe this. Uh, epoxy off my fingers because I dip my finger in it and then once it dries we will come back and unscrew this and mix up some more epoxy in order to go ahead and uh, coat the bases of these stands around. So I'm going to give it a few minutes to dry, download some footage and come back to it in just a second. All right so we've given the uh, epoxy some time to dry, the motherboard is still in here um, I left it on there for about an hour. I was just downloading some footage from my camera, all the clips that I had made from yesterday that aren't going to get used and today that uh, I've gone through. So now we're at the point where we can go ahead and unscrew everything, motherboard, um, starting with the GPU. So we'll get that out of our way first. So it's just the one screw we put in there. Um, pretty simple. And again, I'm throwing all these back in my keep pile, which is on this side of the system. And we're just going to undo the little tab here with the screwdriver, which probably isn't the way that you're supposed to undo it. But um, then we're going to move this out of the way. And after I get all the motherboard screws off, I will show you how the standoffs are attached for now. Okay, so with all of those screws out, we should just be able to lift this off. Um, looks like I got one that doesn't want to come off. There we go. So I'm going to dump the last two motherboard screws out into my hand and set this off to the side. So here we are looking at this uh, case and all the motherboard standoffs. So there are a couple that didn't adhere, and the first one being this top corner, and this one is just kind of wobbly. Um, it didn't seem to want to go on. So what we're actually going to do is um, just put these in the right spot by setting this motherboard back on here, where it lines up with all of the other ones. And we're going to take a Sharpie marker and just draw little lines on them where they go. So put that one where it's supposed to go and this one where it's supposed to go and grab ourselves a Sharpie marker out of the drawer full of Sharpie markers behind me. Sharpies. Ooh, fuck.
So like I said, we're just gonna line these up and draw a couple of Sharpie lines so we know where they go. Um, I just do some straight lines on there. Make sure we're all lined up still, still good. So straight lines and then a line around the outside. So that way we've got everything we need. And then this one is actually a little bit wobbly. So what I'm gonna do is throw a screw back inside this one just to keep it in line with where it's supposed to go. The other one's not quite as wobbly. So just nice and loose, doesn't have to be too tight, but we're gonna draw the line around the edge and then draw our couple of lines straight onto it. So that one there, that one there. All right, so now that that's done, take our screw back out. And what we're going to do is before we get too far, we're going to come around to the back of this and draw where the IO is on this back plate so that we can cut it out. So um, again, I'm gonna have to move you guys to this side. Now that we have the motherboard just resting in there, what we're going to uh, do is not kick my flip flop off. So now that we have the motherboard in there, what we're going to do is bend down and take a look at where this IO is. And we're gonna draw out um, a line for where to cut this back panel out because obviously you can't use any of this IO if all of it is trapped behind this solid aluminum plate here. So taking a look, it looks like the highest we're gonna need is right above this first line. So we're just gonna draw ourselves a line right there. And by first line, I mean the first line of circles in the uh, perforation pattern. So hopefully we can uh, keep this nice and consistent. So just draw your line all the way across. To where the end of the I.O. is, which for us, the PS2 port ends right here. So we're going to go basically to the bottom of this port here. So to just draw ourselves a nice crooked as hell line right there that we're going to cut out. And then the bottom of it is pretty much right along the inside of this. So we'll just draw ourselves a line right here so we know where that is. And then the tricky part is this back, we wanna get as close as we can to the bottom. So I'm gonna go one further and just go right along the inside of this last perforation right here. Um, that'll make it the easiest for us. And then draw our lines right there. So now we have our cutout lines that we're gonna use our cutoff wheel or our Dremel or whatever to cut out this shape so we have access to the rear I.O. on this case. Um, and then we can go ahead and throw our Sharpie back in the drawer, which I missed, but whatever, um, and we can take this out. So we are officially uh, done with our system being in there for now, and we're on to the mods and the paint. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is grab our epoxy again and we're gonna basically mix some epoxy and just go around the outside of all of these standoffs. And we're gonna get these ones that we mixed up or that came loose glued down um, for real. So that way we can uh, make sure that the motherboard is mounted securely. And if I'm being honest with you guys, um, it's not as important to have all of your standoffs on there as it is important to not have standoffs in the wrong place on your system. So. Just keep that in mind. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it's nice to have all of them. Um, so what we're gonna do 
is mix up our epoxy again. I have a new paper clip. So after adding some more epoxy and mixing it up and I tried to apply some with the new paper clip, it uh, did not work. So I grabbed a small clothes pin and this way I can actually hold the epoxy and just put it where I want. And we're just gonna coat around the base of all of these standoffs just to make sure that uh, we have as much um, epoxy holding them on as possible. So that's a nice coating there. And we're just gonna go ahead and do all of these. And the reason those Sharpie lines on there was so we had a good look around them and also a uh, two lines on them which shows us where they're supposed to go. So what we're going to do is first thing, we're just going to add a little drop around the outside and make sure they're lined up and then do the same thing with the other side. So what happened is this just fell over. So now we can hopefully pick this back up, line it up where it's supposed to go, and then let it dry, and we should be good to go. So now we have glue all around it and underneath it, which is pretty important. So mix this up a little more. Same thing with this one. So we just want to add a little dab of glue around it, add some more to the other side, and then we want to, this one's being a little bit wobbly because it had some glue that kind of dried underneath it. So we just want to get glue all nice and around the base here, and then Grab this standoff, put it back in place where it's supposed to go, lining up your Sharpie lines, uh, trying not to do that. So line up your Sharpie lines and just kind of set, ah, oh, damn it. Just kind of set it in place where it's supposed to go. So that way when we throw the motherboard on here, it um, has something to grab onto. So now we wanna let all of this dry. All the extra glue we added, all that stuff is going to help us out tremendously. And then once it's dry, we can go ahead and get started on paint. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna wrap this up here. We have all the standoffs glued in. Uh, I'm gonna let them dry. And then the next video, we will go over um, tearing the rest of the case apart and the process for paint and the cutting of the motherboard tray and then what everybody's waiting for is the side window hopefully everybody's waiting for it that's one of my favorite parts of of my g5 mod so um, yeah like I said this is where I'm gonna wrap this up I hope you guys like this and I hope it's what everybody wants uh, sorry I didn't get the teardown process on camera I feel terrible because that's why I had a whole nother complete system was to show it from start to finish, but uh, you win some, you lose some. So leave a like on this video if you can't wait to see the next one. Comment down below if you have any questions about anything that I explained or some parts or processes that I went through that you don't really understand. And uh, if you have any questions for me, follow me on Instagram and uh, check out my last video, which is going to be over here. And uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel is going to be over there. So. That's all I got, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day.